As my print farm grows, I've been adding more P1Ps to my collection and I figured I'd take one of my new units and show you guys how to set it up. I also have some small print examples as well as some upgrades and accessories available to make your experience with this machine better. This is not a sponsored video, every one of my P1P machines was purchased in full, but if you are here and you are looking to pick one up for yourself, I'll have some links in the video description down below that you can use to support this channel. Let's get started. We'll begin with the unboxing and as you would expect, your P1P will arrive in a box. And it's a well-packaged box. I've never had any of my P1Ps arrive damaged in any way. You can remove the foam and protective packaging from the top, and then the plastic bag can be used to lift the entire unit out of the box. On the top of the machine, you'll find a printed quick start guide, and you can continue to remove all of the cardboard protective packaging, and then lift the accessory box out from the top. With this P1P, I received one of these clock component kits that we'll get to a little bit later. You might get something different, but I do believe that these little kits are subject to availability, so you might not get one at all. We can continue to work our way around the machine and remove more of the foam. We can remove the small piece of foam from the poop chute, and then proceed to cut the zip ties holding the gantry and the print head in place. Now we can have a look at what's included inside of the accessory kit and they do give you a full roll of PLA basic filament. In here, you'll also find the LCD control screen, as well as this very simple filament holder that mounts to the back of the P1P, and a power cord, a PTFE tube, and some very basic maintenance tools. Dig a little deeper and you'll find a small box that contains the installation hardware, as well as some maintenance lubrication and even some spare parts, including a full hot end. Now let's put that installation hardware to use and perform the assembly of the machine. Now the P1P comes mostly pre-assembled. There's really only a handful of very small things to install on this machine. And the first one is the filament holder at the back of the P1P. Bamboo Lab does a very good job of labeling everything, including this sticker at the back that shows you where to install the spool holder. There is one screw already in the back panel that you will need to remove, and you'll replace it with the two screws from the hardware bag labeled spool holder. Tighten those two screws down and your spool holder is installed. Up above that, there are two more holes for the PTFE adapter. It also has its own very clearly labeled hardware bag where you'll find two shoulder screws that you'll use to attach the PTFE tube adapter up in the top right hand corner of the P1P. The shoulder screws allow this adapter to pivot back and forth, which I think is very clever because you'll see that it helps with the alignment of the filament feeding into that tube. There's already a PTFE tube sticking out of the top of the printer which we can attach that PTFE adapter and the other end goes right into the top of the print head. Turning the machine back around and looking downwards, there are three screws surrounding the build plate and they are clearly marked with these orangish red stickers. You'll need to completely remove these three screws as they're just there to hold the bed in place during shipping so it doesn't get damaged. At the top front left hand corner of the P1P, we can remove the tape holding the connector in place for the LCD screen. On the back of the control screen, you'll find a receptacle and the connector and receptacle are keyed. So don't worry, you cannot install these incorrectly. Just make sure you fully push that connector down so it's seated inside of the receptacle. And now when we go to install the LCD controller onto the printer, you're gonna take the excess wire and push it into the back of the screen. And then there are these slots and tabs. So the tabs insert into the front face of the printer. And then you're going to shove that controller over to the left to lock it in place. Now the next thing to do is power on the P1P and get it set up. And the first thing you'll see on the control screen is a warning telling you to read the instruction manual. Next, it reminds you to remove those three screws around the printer bed, which we already did. And now we can select our region and we can go grab our phone and scan the QR code. You'll need to download the Bamboo Handy app from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store and then scan this printer to bind it to your Bamboo Lab account. And this will register the printer to your account as well as share your Wi-Fi connection with the P1P. Next, the printer will want to run a series of self-check tests. And while the print bed is rising up towards the print head, you can now remove the foam that was trapped under the print bed and just allow the printer to take over and run through its series of tests. And if this is your first printer, it's completely normal for the thing to sound very awkward, loud, and to shake violently. After that's done, you may be prompted to download the latest firmware update, which I would highly recommend doing. And at the end, you'll see a message saying the firmware update was successful. 
Now we're finally ready to load in some filament and I'll be using the sample roll of PLA Basic that came with the P1P. I'm gonna get a fresh cut on the end of this filament at about 45 degrees and feed it through the filament tube into the print head. Push that filament as far as it goes and eventually it'll stop and you won't be able to push it any further. Then up at the front of the printer, you can hop into the filament menu on the LCD controller. And in this case, I'm preheating the nozzle to 230 degrees, but I guess technically you don't really need to do that because you can go further down in the menu, click on feeding and then click on load and it will preheat the nozzle to 250 degrees. And for some reason it will move the print head around, but it will also eventually try and feed in that filament. You may have to continue to push up on the filament at the back of the machine to get it to feed into the gears. If you're eager to print something right away, the P1P comes preloaded with some sample prints, but you can't really see what they are. So instead, we're gonna hop back into the Bamboo Handy app and I'm gonna search for a print that is compatible with the clock component kit that I got with this printer. I found this one here that looks simple enough and I'm going to choose the print profile that allows me to print each of the individual parts on their own print bed because I want the clock body and the hands to be two different colors. The workflow in the app is pretty intuitive. I can just select what I want to print, which machine I have, the fact that I've got a textured PEI plate, and then I can select my filament, which will just be the Bamboo Basic PLA. Finally, you can select how many copies you want, and also if you choose to run the bed leveling process before you print, and then we can just click Start Print, and it's gonna send that job to the P1P through the Bamboo Lab Cloud Slicer. And that's it. This printer is set up and running its first print. So if you are new to 3D printing and this is your first machine, it has to be one of the easiest printers to get started with. There's an enormous catalog of parts on the Maker World website, as well as in that Bamboo Handy app, which are essentially connected in the same thing. Many of the users participating in this community will provide print profiles for their prints, and that makes it really easy to dive into this hobby with very little experience. The bamboo machines themselves seem to be very well tuned for printing their own bamboo lab material, such as this PLA Basic. And you can see from this example here, the layer lines are barely visible and the part looks fantastic. The support material also comes off very clean and easy. I did not have to fight with it at all. We'll take a look at a few more example prints, but in this video, it's not gonna be a full blown review where we're going to analyze the part quality of tons of prints. That being said, let's have a look at this print that we just completed as well as the hands that I also printed off camera in white on the P1P and we'll find out how the fit and finish is of this part with relation to the clock kit. So it's pretty clear that the clock movement fits into the back of this print. And what's unclear based on the instructions from the print profile is how this thing is assembled. There's a washer and lock nut that do not seem to fit. The threads on the clock mechanism do not seem to be long enough. So we're gonna skip that and just assume friction is gonna hold it in place. The hands also press onto the clock stem and so friction also holds those in place. And at the back, you'll just need to install a single battery. And once that battery is in place, you'll see the gears start to move and you can set the time on your clock. So we're off to the races with the P1P working. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I actually have a lot of P1Ps and I've been running them for a long time. Now, some of them in my print firm are using the multicolor AMS from Bamboo Lab, but others are just being used as single color printers. And when being used as a single color printer, the most annoying thing is the fact that they put the spool holder at the back of the machine. For some reason, this is a common thing amongst many of the 3D printer manufacturers. So I went ahead and designed this universal spool stand to solve this problem. I'll link the stand in the video description down below, but you can also find it on my website, embracemaking.com. And I'm also going to link to the Maker World listing for the custom parts that you'll need to make the spool stand work with the P1P. These parts include some riser feet that will mount to the bottom of the P1P and they're going to lift your machine up 7.5 millimeters. I'll have all of the print details available on the Maker World page. You don't need to use any fancy material here. PLA works just fine. And just to be clear, these are not vibration damping feet or anything of that nature. They simply just raise the machine a few millimeters. And if you're worried about your machine sliding around, you can also add some non-slip feet to the bottom of the riser feet. In that print profile, you'll also find a second PTFE tube adapter. I've printed two here. You just need to print one, and you'll find that a standard PTFE tube collet will press into one of those holes, 
and then you can use the clip to secure a PTFE tube in place once you've pushed that in, of course. Getting this little adapter installed in the back of the P1P is very simple. We can just remove our spool and our spool holder. Those spool holder bolts are the perfect length for our PTFE tube adapter, so we can remove the one screw at the top center of the P1P and then use the one from the spool holder since we're not using it anymore. We'll push it through the counterboard hole in the PTFE tube holder and then thread it into that hole in the top center of the P1P. Now, if you have a P1S, you'll probably have some panels at the back of the machine, but I think that screw will still be long enough for you. We can then remove the short piece of PTFE tube from the PTFE adapter that came with the P1P, and the P1P also comes with a spare piece of PTFE tube, which we can use to connect the two PTFE tube connectors. The tube will now make a gentle loop that will look something like this, and you'll see that at the top of the PTFE tube connector that you printed, I'm going to leave a little bit sticking out so it's easy to see where we can feed in the filament. Now we can take our universal spool stand and slide it under the machine, and you'll see how I have it straddling the right rear foot of the P1P. Now we can mount a roll of filament to our universal spool stand, and as you can see, it will be at the top of our machine rather than the back, so it's very easy to access. The spool stand uses a threaded conical nut to clamp down on the center bore of your roll of filament, and then you can just feed that into the top of the PTFE tube sticking up at the center rear of the P1P. You also may have noticed that in the custom parts list for the P1P, there is a 25mm splice extension. The P1P isn't an extremely tall machine, but I do find it is nice to have that little bit of extra height on the spool stand if you have the room to accommodate it. Now your spool is very easily accessible from the front of the machine and just makes your life so much easier when dealing with filament changes. At the bottom of the spool stand, we also have some additional features, one of them being a USB stick holder at the back, and there's a little tray at the front for more USB sticks or potentially SD cards. There are also some holes in this area here where you can place some tools like hex keys, screwdrivers, as well as a nozzle clearing tool or a nozzle wrench. And there's some additional holes at the bottom for spare nozzles if you have a printer that uses the more traditional M6 style nozzles. And finally up in the tube splice, there's a holder for your side cutters, so they're always within reach when you need them. Now one other thing I made available is this AMS compatible refill master spool. I didn't like the printable version from Bamboo Lab. I found the little locking tabs eventually wore out and the spool could come apart. I took a slightly different approach with this design and tried to come up with something that wouldn't wear out or get stuck. The two pieces thread together with a very large and easy to print male and female thread. Now, of course, here you'll see that I have a partially used spool, so I'll try and remove this without it completely unraveling. But on a fresh, unopened refill spool, this is very easy to do. On the second part, you'll see that this is where the refill spool will slip on top of. It has a series of holes on one face, and it still has the little locating tab for the bamboo compatible refill cardboard spools. That tab simply lines up with the small cutout in the cardboard spool, and that will seat the refill in place. And then we can take our second part and we can thread it. And when it's fully threaded on, it's very secure and friction will generally hold this in place and it should not come apart. However, for those of us who have had spools come apart mid print and are a little bit paranoid, I've incorporated these slots as well as a series of holes so that as you tighten the second part down, the holes will eventually line up with the slots. And then you can take a single M3 socket head or button head and just thread it into those holes. And that will lock it in place and prevent it from unthreading. I'll put a link to that refill spool in the video description down below. And the final thing that you're gonna need for your P1P is a poop bucket. This one here is not my design, but it's just a recommended accessory because every time you go to start a print or change filament, some poop will be produced and it runs out the back of the printer. If your printer's up against the wall, you'll have a mess that quickly accumulates. And of course you want to have some sort of bucket back there that you can easily remove and clean. So that's pretty much it as a brief getting started guide to the Bamboo Lab P1P. This machine has been out for quite some time now, so there's already a lot of reviews on YouTube. So I chose not to do a very deep and thorough dive into this printer like some of my other videos, which I would encourage you guys to go check out. And if it's not too big of an ask, consider subscribing and checking out my website, embracemaking.com. Thanks for watching.